Welcome back to Sparks and Recreation. Thank you for driving the ambulance, Maggie. The seats are comfy. <laughs> Brought zip ties. Use an old cable. Luckily, I saw that, or we would have. On the bright side, we only have like you know a few more hours to go. Hey guys, we are outside of Poughkeepsie, New York, about three and a half hours from home. We just picked up this 1990 E350 cutaway ambulance, which has been partially decommissioned, but not fully. So let's see if one, it'll make a drive home without us really knowing anything about it, because I bought it sight unseen. And see two, make it or break it. <laughs> see if we can make it or break it on the way home. And uh, let's check it out, go over some fluids and see some of the features it has. And it's actually pretty awesome. All right, so I guess first off, it's just a base E350 with a non-turbo 7.3 diesel. It looks like somebody had started to do a restoration on this. New tires in the rear. These shackle mounts have all been replaced. It has a new exhaust system on it. it. Has new batteries, new hubcaps, all this new stuff. But then there's a lot of stuff that's just kind of been left neglected, which is like the rockers, obviously, on all these old Fords. So we got for a motor here. So we just paid the guy for this and are about to take it on a almost five hour road trip home. Uh, looks like he did have it running. So I don't want to check coolant, but that is nice and full. Has good pressure just sitting here. Check the oil. Very dark. Let's wipe it and check it. To be honest, I don't know a ton about diesel, so this should be interesting. It does have a huge generator alternator on it to power everything in the back, which you'll see some of that. Recent fuel filter. Check tranny fluid. I'm supposed to be checking this running, but we'll see what color it is. The longest dipstick ever. Yeah, this dipstick is almost as long as... It's almost as tall as me. As tall as... <laughs> That's ridiculous. Anyhow, it's got nice pink fluid. It's probably actually... Wait, hold on. Wait, let me see it really quick. Yeah, Come here, oh. Maggie. Maggie. We think this dipstick is taller than you. <laughs> it's pretty dang close. Look at it. Okay. <laughs> it's about this. It's, it's got fluid, so... If it's enough to touch on that thing, it's good, right? Imagine if it gets low and you just have to get a longer dipstick to make it work. Uh, Instead of adding it, you just get a slightly longer one. All right, so this thing has 90,000 miles on it, and it was used up until only, the guy said, three years ago. Somewhere down near in the, it was built in St. Paul, Minnesota, the body on this. Uh, it was used by the Ulster County in New York. That's a little outside of New York City. It has all the storage. Anyway, who cares about the storage, right? Let's play with some of the buttons and see if any of this stuff does anything. Bring you in through the back here. Ugh. A lot of people take these and turn them into tiny homes because one, this stuff is built commercial grade. Every single one of these is super heavy duty. You can just feel that you could go off road with this even a little bit and it'd probably actually hold together. Yeah, she thinks it'd be a good race hauler. I think that's her trying to convince me to keep the thing. Which is... I don't keep it. I want to keep it. <laughs> Sebastian wants to keep it. Anyways, there's so much dry storage. What most people do is either put a fold-away bed or a... Uh, you just put like a queen in here and then make this your food and prep area. And there's tons of storage. This one's old enough though, it doesn't have any kind of water. Right? Yeah, there's no water in this one. It's pretty... What's this do? Just more compartments. I don't know. Anyways, tons of storage. Um, in order to make it run, you have to have this inverter on. Obviously, leave on at all times. Uh, we need to turn the main power on, which is here. Alright, so on the side of the driver's seat, there is a main power 
down here. That's the power to all the batteries. This is your ignition that's on. And then this is your board to run all the sirens and that type of stuff. So on, if we want lights to flash outside, this is all of them. Like, I don't know if you can see, but you can kind of see it. In you can kind of see it in the mirror, how you can see a strobe is going. Maybe not. Yeah, I'll insert a clip of what it looks like on the outside. Um, and then you have all of your spotlights. Sebastian's found a couple of them. And our favorite part is the PA. Hello? Oh, wait, you gotta go manual. Hello? Hello? Does it not want to work? Hello? Hmm. You gotta... It's on. Um, it should work. Does it have to be actually running? Probably. Oh, oh that's it. Hold on. Oh yeah, start it. Hold on. Alright, this is our favorite part right here. Alright, so this is our favorite part. So? Say hi mom. Hi mom. Hi mom. Mom's outside so. getting footage. All right, and then you have your different sounds for alarms. <laughs> you didn't get yelled, what? you just went to phases. <laughs> it's so loud. <laughs> Anyways, the fact that it all works is pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, so when it comes to actual vehicle here, like I said, 89,000 miles. They say it's original. Gas gauge does not seem to work. Uh, it's been running for a few minutes here and we got good temp. Uh, we have good battery charge. We did get the radio working. Radio seems to work. The wipers work. Even the intermittent low and high all seem to work. Heat works. I don't know about AC. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much oh, all the... we also got the bud. Oh, yeah, there's... <laughs> it is so loud out there. I love um, it. Anyways, we have all sorts... These are the different lights. Left side, right side, rear. All seems to work. I'm trying to see if this changes. No, I think it's just loud no matter what. A little bit. That... Seems to quiet it a tiny bit. <laughs> so, anyways, that's the majority of the inside stuff. We're still trying to figure out what stuff. It has a heater. I'm not sure if it works. Um, but we do have bench lights and lights in here that we can turn on. Yeah, turn on that. See the dome lights? They all seem to come on. There's a second, like, I don't know how any of this stuff works, but it has. Owner's manuals for everything in here, including all of the warranty paperwork from when it was new, how to service it, when it was serviced. It's pretty awesome, actually. So, anyhow, now that we kind of showed you it a little bit, we're going to attempt to drive it home, and hopefully it goes well. Uh, the guy says he doesn't know a whole lot about it, other than he got it, need to get rid of it, because he took it in on, I bought this wholesale from another dealership, so... <laughs> Let's go. Yep. Let's got some of it flashing here. Yep, the beacon still works. Saw that. <laughs> That's so awesome. Alright. Yeah, it changes the way it flashes. Alright, and then uh, do the floodlights over here. Le do the left side. Yep, even the floodlights work. Holy crap. This thing's so sick. Yeah, this thing is definitely not decommissioned. <laughs> not all the way. Most right. cop cars have all this stuff taken out, like ambulances, fire trucks, they generally remove all I these things. Out all the floodlights, so. All right, cool. And this door, we have not figured out how to get. I don't understand how you're supposed to close it. I don't know. We're not sure how to get that to shut. But it's supposed to block off. Well, there's backup alarm. I know what that Try is. the backup. 
Nope, didn't do anything. Well, that's one. Oh, that's like the one thing that doesn't work. Anti-theft, what do you think that does? I don't know what anti-theft is. I don't know what tranny these have, but this has a manual you can like over, sure, overdrive on and off. It looks like it might be an aftermarket. It's kind of strange. I don't know. I don't know. Mom says all the turn signals and everything work when we were checking them, so I guess let's get on the road. Yeah. Alright. Transmission doesn't seem to slip or anything, so that's good. Okay. To the highway. To the highway. <clears throat> need to head north. It actually is like pretty quiet even though it's diesel. Yeah. I think we left oh, the door. I think we might have left the door or something open. No, a drawer. A drawer? My uh, mama thought it was like something dragging her. Flopping open and going down the road. Yeah. To the highway! To the highway. Alright. I'm blind. <laughs> this is a direct shot out of the highway for our first time, so. Here we go. There's some stuff rattling. Right <laughs> oh. There's definitely something rattling right around. That's there. the drawer. We, we'll fix that when this is done. Maybe. Where? I, mean, I don't know where you want it. I'll go fix the thing. Alright, Sebastian's gonna go try to get the cabinets so they're oh, not yeah, flopping. Right, I'll try not to kill us. Oh, this is to the floor. <laughs> it okay, is fixed. not fast at all. Fixed. She's a bit of a fixer. Alrighty. It actually rides really smooth at like 55 miles an hour. And these seats are incredibly soft. They are very soft. 1990s vans have the best seats. Oh. I also yeah, like this. Brother. Where's the adjustment thing? There it is. I don't know what it does. Yeah, but... Oh my god. We're hit some bumps. Hit some bumps. Like... Mom's still behind us? No. Alright, so we're probably just at cruise at about 60 here because I'm assuming it's terrible gas mileage if we go any faster. So we got on the highway, me and Sebastian are making a video. And we're like, where the heck's mom? We don't see her behind us. Well, apparently she got on the highway with Maggie driving with the rear hatch of the van open without even realizing until they got up the highway speeds. It's nothing going wrong for us so far. Yeah, already something going wrong. Always. Yep. All right, uh, we'll do some time lapse here. If anything happens, we'll let you know, but it all seems like smooth sailing so far. Yeah, good bolts, good temp. Oil. I don't know if that's pressure or temperature. I'm hoping pressure. this thing and the answer is if you give me five dollars for every button you can have it but unfortunately for you there's like a bazillion buttons in this thing <laughs> just got to a restaurant to try to get some food here in Albany. I've been driving for about an hour, but Sebastian noticed there's a pretty good puddle under it. What is it? Oh. Uh, it smells like... Looks like transmission fluid. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to keep an eye on that. And probably buy some. Because that's not great. Well. Stuff like 
I saw that, or we would have. On the bright side, we only have like, you know, a few more hours to go. All right, well, gonna grab dinner at this restaurant here, and uh, we'll catch you back in a minute. All right, they're waiting for us outside the restaurant here. Looking all pretty in the sun. Good chow. All right, we decided to leave the ambulances. I'm not sure how much has come out. And we went a half mile down the road to O'Reilly's. Let's get some ATF and a funnel. Alright, so one thing that I forgot to show you guys is uh, I came all this way with our tools but forgot zip ties. Used an old cable, tied it together, opened the door, and there's a bunch of zip ties on the ground. Oh, uh, that wasn't an old cable. Right, so uh, after a trip to get some ATF, we're gonna start it up, put it in neutral, check the fluid, top off, and then get back on the road. Let's see what we got here. So it's warm, running in neutral. Check to see what we got here. Hopefully it's reading still. It is not. So it's gonna be about impossible to get an accurate reading because this is gonna ride along it's like straight and then drops. So no matter what I do, this is gonna, when I put fluid in that, it's gonna coat this whole thing in fluid. I have no idea exactly where it is. So. It comes out pretty quick, so we're just gonna add a bit. Not much of a angle in there. Got some help. Alright, so the problem is this tube is very straight. It doesn't really go down. So all the fluid is just sitting in this tube. So when you run your dipstick in it, unless you let this thing sit for like a while, you're not going to get an accurate reading. So I made the educated decision to just throw a half gallon in it and we'll just drive it till it starts slipping and we'll know it's low. Uh, not great for it, but that's probably our best option. So we have plenty of storage space inside the Ambulance, let's toss it in there and see if it's just dripping right back out. Ugh. Well, it's not pouring back out. Definitely got a pretty good grip. I don't think it's even from the pan, I think it's from mostly the front seal or something. It's all from kind of the bell housing area. Pretty significant. Oh. All right, well, it is what it is. I'm gonna guess the guy knew because the the closest <laughs> compartment to what I just opened and did has a rag soaked in tranny fluid. So this is a known problem that I was not told about, but you know what? It is what it is. We already made it about 80 miles. It's not leaking that terrible. But it's loose. This whole thing needs just. All the bolts tightened up. Alrighty. Upward and onward, Vixen. I'm gonna drive down the highway for a little bit and then we're gonna find a rest area and then you can drive it for a little bit and it'll blow up on you instead, okay? <laughs> no? Yes. Alright. Leaving Albany, obviously we have to let everybody know we're on our way. <laughs> Alright. She called me a loser. All right, it's not slipping or anything. All right, leaving this little plaza, leaving the O'Reilly's, heading back onto the highway that work our way home. Let's be honest, is it even a Ford if it doesn't leak fluid? Three quarters of a mile. All right, there's a cop getting on the highway with us. We are not slipping, we're up to 55, so I think we're good. 
We gotta get on the 90 here in a second. Spend another 20 minutes of driving or so. We're out of Albany area. Gonna be coming up on Herkimer and stuff not too far off. Things are going all right. I'm gonna do a little time lapse here. Side of Fonda, just got some gas. Maggie's gonna drive us the next little bit. Thing looks pretty good. All right. Can I go? Yep. You're driving. Didn't see anything? No. Alrighty. It's kind of loud and clunky. idea if the gas gauge works but I figure about 30 gallons over the course of 300 miles it's got to be getting a better gas mileage than that. We go on like 60? 60? Yeah it likes between 60 and 65. Trying to make it up these hills passing the trucks, but we're about as slow as them, so we got a whole lot of cars behind us. <laughs> oh well, it's like being in the Beetle again. Barely going 65. Maggie's driving. I'm gonna see what it's like back here. It's actually not bad. It's fairly quiet. Maggie's passing somebody, making it up the hill. Oh boy. Oh my god. Of course, we decided to go uphill. Going uphill? Giving it the beans now. Rolling coal, baby. Think of driving the ambulance, Maggie. The seats are gonna pee. <laughs> it's kinda bouncy though. Yeah, I don't know how to oh. Yeah, the door handle's like in there. Alright. Alright, Maggie's switching out. We've been another like half hour. Yeah. Drip, drip, drip. It's not terrible. I only lost like a half gallon the whole time. All right, you ready? <laughs> Blooper. Is that Hopefully this is the final stretch of like about an hour of driving. We're just outside Utica. Crank along 65, 70 miles an hour. Everything still seems good other than the fact we have a pretty good drip off the transmission. Sebastian's back with us, what's up? Hola. All right knock out this last hour or so, get home. The sun is starting to set. We started this this morning, so it's been a very long, it's taking closer to eight hours. <laughs> we stopped at the last rest area before we get home, which leaves about a half hour, 45 minutes or so. Everything seems good. Got a thumbnail picture now, the sun's starting to go down, and you can kind of see some of the lights. And uh, merge back on the highway and finish out this trip. Woo! Alright, we got all the lights.
lights on, the sun is setting, and here's our exit off the highway onto the small roads and almost home. So I think we're gonna do all right here. Once we get to the actual uh, lot, I'm gonna do some of the sirens and stuff from outside so you can hear just how ridiculous they are. Oh, it's loud. So go ahead and hit one right now. <laughs> Guys, that was a long ass day. We made it back home. Got to watch the sun go down as we're driving, pulling in. Dark, I'm gonna show you guys some of the lights and siren features now that nobody can call the cops on me because I own this property, so if it's loud, tough nuggets. What she looks like at night. Flashes, all sorts of stuff. This is what some of the sirens sound like. God. <laughs> it is so loud. Alright, say thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Alright All right, guys, if you enjoyed that, check out some of our other videos. This one was actually pretty quick and easy. See if I can do anything about that transmission leak, but I'm probably just gonna list this thing up for sale so that somebody can turn it into a tiny home. Obviously, it runs real good. You can take that five hour trip without much issue. All right, guys, comment, like, subscribe, and we'll see you.